Greetings, this is Father Michael with our Word of the Week. This week's word is Dias Natalis. The Latin expression D-I-E-S N-A-T-A-L-I-S for birthday. <laughs> Day of birth. And in Latin, it often refers to the anniversary of the day in which a saint is born into heaven. Their death day on earth, but their birthday in heaven. Now, this week we celebrate the feast day of our Holy Father, Dominic. Saint Dominic, patron of our order and of our particular parish here. Wonderful day, but you might say, hey, today, this Sunday, is the 13th of August. That's not his feast day, is it? Well, no, you'd be right. <laughs> it's actually August 8th. But here's the interesting thing. Nothing of significance happened to St. Dominic that I'm aware of. Maybe he had, you know, a, a wonderful peanut butter and jelly sandwich on this day sometime. But nothing happened of remarkable nature on August 8th. So why is this feast day August 8th? Well, remember, and this will come around to a very fine spiritual point, but remember that the days in which we honor saints are their dies natales, that is, the day that they come to heaven, that they are born into eternal life. And so the day that St. Dominic was born into eternal life was August 6th. So you say, well, why don't we celebrate the Feast of St. Dominic on August 6th? And this is the reason. <laughs> it's because there's another universal feast on that day, the Transfiguration. No matter what day of the week it falls, August 6th is always the Feast of the Transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ, 40 days before the exaltation of the cross, which is the mirror image of the Transfiguration. Christ's glorified body, miraculously shown in that moment, has reference to the cross, that is his suffering, that is passable body has to undergo in order for his glorified body to indeed exist. Now, since the church can't change, it's feast like that. In other words, if you happen to be someone who dies on December 25th, or on August 15th, or on December 8th, you'll never have your own feast day. The church then transfers it to a day before or day after. So why isn't St. Dominic's feast day the day before or the day after. Why isn't it the fifth or the seventh? Well, the fifth is uh, indeed the celebration of Our Lady of the Snows, the Feast of St. Mary Major, an ancient feast. And on the seventh is the Feast of Saint Pope St. Sixtus and martyrs. Once again, early church martyrs who actually died on the sixth and they were already bumped to the seventh. So it couldn't be either of those days. So the church says, okay, What's the next best day? Well, either the 4th or the 8th of August. And so, for many years, for hundreds of years, the Feast of St. Dominic on the 4th of August. But something happened. There was another holy, godly man who, after St. Dominic lived, ministered, and died. His name was John Vianney. And in 1925, when the Curie of ours was beatified, by the Pope. They said, where should we put his feast day? And they said, well, we can't put it on the day of his death. He died on August 4th because St. Dominic is there. And we can't put it on those other days for the reasons I've given. So we have to put him on the 8th. So he was on the 8th. Well, after the Vatican Council, when they were sorting through and in a sense collating all the feast days of the church, they said, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> the 4th and the 8th aren't significant for Dominic or John Vianney. But it is significant for John Vianney. He actually died on the 4th of August. Let's put him on the 4th. And then St. Dominic, nothing happened on the 4th, really. It's really the 6th. Let's put him on the 8th. And so that's where it is on the 8th. And you might say, oh, that's a lot of interesting water cooler liturgical knowledge, Father Michael. Interesting, but not really. <laughs> Here's a spiritual import. If you think about it this way, the day of our birth, our conception, our coming into this world, and the day in which we pass to eternal life, these are days that are not our choosing. These are days which come under the divine providence. God alone chooses when we come to be 
and when we come to be with him. For that reason, those days are particularly potent in connecting with the communion of those who have gone before us. On the day of someone's death, their birth into heaven, we have an extraordinary capacity to receive God's grace through their intercession. We have an extraordinary way to pray for those who might still be on the way. This is why the church has special masses for those who have died on anniversary days, because there is a significant way in which, under God's providence, he has chosen that particular moment in time, if you will, for this person to be the conduit through which his grace and his blessing will come. As we celebrate the Feast of St. Dominic then, we know there is that connection to transfiguration, the day he died. And as I said last week, that transfiguration is the revelation of God wanting to transform us sacramentally through his body and blood, but it's also the revelation that he wants to transfigure us, not only when we receive him sacramentally, but even through our suffering. This is that day when what? When the followers of St. Dominic were grieving, knowing that he would die, and he gave them a promise that he would be more helpful, of more use to them after he had gone than he ever would have been. In other words, in the midst of their grief and their suffering and their loss, that was precisely the moment when God's grace would be most significant and powerful for them. So too, we celebrate this feast of St. Dominic on the 13th. Frankly, it doesn't matter what day it is. Why? Because we know the real day is the 6th. <laughs> that is that connection with transfiguration. And on this day, like those first followers of Dominic, we ask, Holy Father Dominic, that he bless us through our suffering through those ways in which we have lost, we grieve, and we struggle, that he might be of more use to us now <laughs> than when he was actually alive with us, that the power and the strength of Almighty God might give us the transfigured living presence of the joy of the Lord in our lives. Holy Father Dominic, pray for us. Amen. Amen.